Hello, Benjamin of Bunnies. I am home with my mom in Arkansas, and I found a couple books at her house that I liked when I was younger, so I want to read them to you. This one is called The Sneetches by Dr. Seuss, and it reminds me of the Rosa Parks and the Ruby Bridges story, so I chose it to read to you first. So I'm going to read it to you, and I want you to think, why, does it, why do you think it's similar to the Rosa Parks or the Ruby Bridges stories? The Sneetches. Now the star belly sneeches had bellies with stars. The plain belly sneeches had none upon bars. Those stars weren't so big, they were really so small. You might think a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star belly sneeches would brag. We're the best kind of sneech on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. We'll have nothing to do with the plain belly sort. And whether, when they met some, when they were out walking, they'd hike right on past them without even talking. When the star-bellied children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in on the game? Not at all. You only could play if your bellies had stars, and the plain belly children had none upon bars. When the star belly sieges had frankfurter roasts, or picnics, or parties, or marshmallow toasts, they never invited the plain belly sneeches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near, and that's how they treated them year after year. Then one day it seems, when the plain belly sieges were moping and doping, alone on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and clean, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean. And I've heard of your troubles, I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that, I'm the fix it up chappy. I've come here to help you, I have what you need, and my prices are low, and I work at great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Then quickly, Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine. And he said, you want stars like a star belly sneech? My friends, you can have them for $3 each. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they clamored inside and the big machine roared. And it, and it clonked and it bonked and it jerked and it burped and it bopped them about and the thing really worked. When the plain belly sneeches popped out, they had stars. They actually did, they had stars upon bars. When they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start, we're exactly like you, you can't tell us apart. We're all just the same now, you snooty old smarties, and now we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at the first. We're still the best niches and they are the worst. But now, how in the world will we know, they all frowned, if which one is what or the other way round? Then up came McBean with a very sly wink, and he said, things are not quite as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who? That's perfectly true. But come with me, friends. Do you know what I'll do? I'll make you again the best sneeches on beaches, and all it will cost you is $10 eaches. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star off machine. This wondrous contraption will take off your stars, so you won't look like sneeches who have them on bars. And that handy machine worked very precisely, removed all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. Then, with snoots in the air, they paraded about, and they opened their beaks, and they let out a shout. We know who is who, now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneeches are sneeches without. Then, of course, those with stars got frightfully mad. To be wearing a star was frightfully bad. Then, of course, old Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited them into his star off machine. Then, of course, from then on, as you probably guess, things got into a horrible mess. All the rest of that day, on those wild, screaming beaches, the fix it up chappy kept fixing up sneeches. Off again, on again, in again, out again, 
Through the machines they raced around and about again, changing their stars every minute or two. They kept paying money, they kept running through. Whether this one was that one or that one was this one, which one was what one or what one was who? Then, when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chappy packed up and he went. And he laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They never will learn, no, you can't teach a snitch. Buck McBean was quite wrong, I'm happy to say, that the snitches got really quite smart on that day. The day they decided that snitches are snitches, and no kind of snitch is the best on the beaches. That day, all the snitches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon bars. So you can comment on this video, or you can just talk to your siblings or your parents. Tell them the story of Ruby, Bridges, and Rosa Parks, and tell them what do you think about this story is similar to those stories.